Hello there, everybody. Uh, I've been putting together short videos showing some of the great Golden Age characters that inspired my character, Captain Lancet, that's in featured in We Are Scarlet Twilight. Uh, so today, I wanted to get to one of my favorites, uh, the Phantom. Uh, in addition, he's probably, I think, one of the most obvious influences uh, if you look at my character and story. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun to take a deep dive into the character, show you some great art, and show you some points where he inspired uh, my character design and some of the the things he does. Phantom was created in 1935 by Lee Falk. Uh, an interesting fact, he was the first of what we generally consider a superhero. While other characters, uh, Zorro, Tarzan, had a lot of superhero, superheroic elements, uh, the Phantom was the first guy to sort of have the tights and the mask all together in a way that we kind of understand to be a superhero. So fun fact there. Uh, this is a great painting of him uh, that, was, that was used on a comic cover. The, uh, the thing I wanted to point out here, uh, in addition to the mask shape being a lot like Captain Lancet, uh, my character, who you can kind of see here, the other thing I really, really liked about the Phantom and a few other classic Golden Age heroes is they had the two guns. Uh, the two revolvers in each hand was a real cool, in my opinion, just a Golden Age thing. I, I see that and I think of the time period. So as I was kind of putting Captain Lancet's Lance its weapons together. And if you've read the story so far, you kind of know what those weapons are and that they're a bit of a uh, bit of a cover up for something else he does. Um, he doesn't really need guns, but he just having that that visual, that silhouette of the masked hero with the two guns is directly from the Phantom. And I think just a really cool way to always reinforce the time period. One of the cool things about the comic uh, when I was put together is I just wanted to highlight all these great things you'd see in Golden Age comics. And Anytime I'd find something that would fit in the story, or in most cases would enhance the story, uh, I'd always take pains to throw it in there and just really immerse the reader, hopefully, in those in a lot of the things that make those old comics stand out. So there's, uh, as you can see, here's the, the same thing here. We got the guy with the, the thick belt holsters uh, and the two guns is, is right from, from the Phantom. And his costume design as well, uh, the Phantom has that sort of shape up here. Um, but uh, this mask is pretty much the way it is. A lot of heroes have this type of mask, but it pretty much is that way because of the Phantom. I wanted him to really resemble that character, uh, which I think is a nice nod to the first superhero. But back to the Phantom. Uh, here's some of what the comics look like. Uh, this one's, I think, from the 40s. It's a little later on, but uh, is a good look at how the drawing style was done. Wilson McCoy was Lee Falk's assistant and, uh, and you know, helped out with the uh, the comic, uh, even when Falk was uh, drafted or joined during World War II. Uh, and a funny story about Lee Falk, or not really funny, but interesting, is he created the character in 1936 and worked on it until his death in 1999. So a pretty incredible run, if you think about it. Uh, some cool stuff here. Uh, again, I love that they leave these, the, the silhouette of this character open, uh, like they do in a lot of the comics, because it really accentuates you know, this, the stripe design, the darks on the boots, the mask, it really makes him more of an icon uh, and less of a drawing, which I think really works in these old comics. I've, I've mentioned that in a few other videos. Some more looks. This one, obviously, a much more modern uh, phantom strip, but uh, very cool stuff. This is kind of the iconic image of him with the, uh, the arms crossed, and we'll see a lot more of that later. Here he's fighting some more animals, but to be truthful, you know, he's kind of breaking it up. I guess he kind of like an animal bouncer here taking care of this fawn kicks better than a bullet. I guess I agree with that, but it's a weird thing to say. Uh, anyway, there's another strip. This one, obviously a lot more feathered. Um, I'm not crazy about this drawing, but I included it a, a, cause it's just cool to I, do, I like the drawing, but I, I think it really contrasts with that other strip. I showed a few pages back where it was left open for, uh, you know, these weren't colored, but just it being open as a silhouette really makes him more impactful and, and looks like he's more of a, an iconic image. He's more of a symbol. Uh, and I think that really is something that when you're dealing with superheroes, that tends to work better than getting in there and really shading this all out. This is obviously, I think, some uh, Alex Raymond uh, influence here, um, you know, with the background, the dry brush, stuff like that. It does look cool. I love the way this guy draws the belt. But uh, I, I think that's something as I'm setting up for more Scarlet Twilight, uh, I mean, looking at a lot of these old comics really helps me think of, hey, what, what really works for these types of characters, the, the poses they strike, the costumes they wear. Um, 
lots of drawing styles out there and and it's really important i think to find the one that works best and highlights what's cool about your character what's interesting about it and the phantom uh, like i said really really helps highlight that when you look especially at the same character done in many different ways uh diana um his his love interest usually in the movies um uh, one thing you'll see and i i found you know, a lot of these images that I didn't save and put in the videos, the Phantom has like no game at all. He's really blows it a lot of times. So here he is getting in the doghouse with his with Diana and uh, sitting outside, talking to Devil, complaining uh, as if it's uh, her fault. I don't think it's her fault at all, to be honest. Uh, another one here, again, really leaving him open as a shape, uh, which is very cool. Uh, I love, this is a great scan, so it's nice to see these really rich blacks, but I really love the graphic uh, nature of these. Uh, it mixes even well when you when you do get into some textures and some grays. Um, the Phantom really jumps out, which I think is is a, is a good move. It's, it really makes these look, uh, look very cool. It's a more recent uh, version of the Shadow, or I'm sorry, the Shadow, the, uh, the Phantom by the late Paul Ryan. This has always been a favorite of mine. Very cool stuff here. Uh, kind of has that 90s Jurgens, you know, artsy bear feel to it. But, uh, and Paul Ryan was definitely somebody who, who did a style that really takes you to that period. So it's a cool image here. Again, love to see the, the double guns and the ring, which is another cool feature he has. He's got that ring he hits people with and um, is part of his, uh, his legacy. Uh, so as you, you probably know, he's a, uh, the idea of the Phantom is that it started in the 1500s and each Phantom, passed down to his son, the, uh, the mantle of the Phantom. So he's been going back a ways, uh, fighting, fighting crime in Bengala, which I believe is his fictional country. Another look at, you know, again, this was, I think, a, a collection book here. Uh, very cool stuff, very graphic. Love these thick lines. Uh, really, you know, they really knew how to make these characters pop, and it's always nice to see examples of that. Uh, and here's a later look from when DC published this, I think. Uh, Jim Aparo, one of my all-time favorite artists, uh, did some phantom work. This is, if you look at Aparo's work in the you know 60s and early 80s, you'd see a lot of this feathering. You'd see this in his, his early Batman stuff. Um, it's not my favorite of his styles, but it, it, it does really shine uh, when he's when he's has a really good page. So it's cool to see that um, and kind of place it in the context of his career career. So a few more pages, uh, again, by Aparo. Great motion here. I mean, he was one of the best at, at just making characters look dynamic, strong, heroic. Uh, you know, every, you know, this is, is an incredibly dynamic panel. Uh, so it's good stuff to see. So there's some other merchandise uh, spinoff from, from back in the day. There's some Flash Gordon here and uh, some very cool Phantom covers. I uh, love these these big little books they had great design even if the illustrations themselves were a little crude as, as these are they really look good when you have such a good character design and uh it, another thing to note here sometimes they'd make him red i'm not sure why he looks pretty cool both ways i think i think purple is certainly his more iconic look initially he was going to be gray uh, and was going to be called the gray ghost but uh they decided to change that and give him his purple look which i think is certainly what sets him apart you don't see a lot of purple superheroes so cool to see another look at him here again very simple lets the color shine cool stuff uh here is again him is demonstrating his uh incomparable charm uh and this one i like a lot this is such a cool cover uh, i love this this effect they have in the clouds the planes look cool with the color you know the lines kind of dropped out this type is amazing uh, and this is a really cool illustration of the phantom radioing uh, i think to somebody very, very cool stuff. One of my, I, this is something I'm definitely going to base a variant cover on one of these days. And there's a more modern drawing, um, just kind of a Frazetta style, but uh, really works for the character. Um, I'd certainly like to see more of this guy's phantom work, and I will have to track that down. And then a few painted covers by Don Newton, who was a legendary Batman artist in the 80s. Great, great artist. Very much like a Ross Andrew, Jim Aparo type style. Really strong stuff. Uh, is another one of his and kind of fighting a mad scientist which is cool to see always love to see this mad scientist machinery it really puts you i think in the time period and there's one more color version of that drawing we saw before unfortunately color makes the scenario no less uh, comprehensible
And one last painting from Mike Grell, who you probably know from his Green Arrow work uh, or Shaman's Tears from Image in the 90s. A uh, great artist uh, and a very cool look at the Phantom on his uh, throne in his cave, which is sort of his primitive uh, proto bat cave. Uh, Batman, in fact, takes a lot from the Phantom uh, and adapts it in really cool ways. There's a little bit of the merchandise you'd see. Um, again, doing his classic cross-armed pose, which is very cool. This is I, I love how crude these old uh, these old statuettes look. There's a lot of Superman ones like this. Uh, the paint's always chipped. There's just something about them that looks so weirdly cool. So he's been in the movies a few times. Uh, mentioned the 1996 movie earlier, but uh, he was also one of the first. Uh, this actually probably was the first superhero movie. Uh, starred Tom Tyler, who also played Captain Marvel in that serial. Uh, this was a pretty good one as far as serials go. Uh, pretty faithful to the character. Um, he had the cave. He had all the cool stuff. Uh, kind of all the things you want to see in a Phantom movie. So uh, in addition to being a cool poster, it actually was also a pretty good movie. So there's a few more looks at that. They had individual um, for each chapter. Uh, as you know, the serials were just short things, and they had cliffhangers. So each one of these got their own poster. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, I like what they did with the costume. It, they didn't, you know, it's not perfect, but they didn't really mess with it that much. So here's a poster from the 1996 film, which probably is what most of you are familiar with. Uh, it's what I'm more familiar with. Uh, I always liked this one a lot. It, I, I think, got lost in the shuffle of Batman and the Phantom and Dick Tracy, but uh, was very faithful to the character. The villain was not so great, but everything else was pretty cool. Uh, I would, I would advise checking that one out. And to bring it back to Captain Lancet a little bit, um, an interesting fact, maybe interesting, I hope it is. Uh, this is a look at the costume in the 96 film and uh, that Billy Zane wore, or some mock-up of it. Uh, they did this thing where, because there was really not that much going on, you didn't want to mess with the silhouette of it being basically purple, they did kind of a smart thing, was just to screen some textures back and, and give a little bit of stuff here. Um, I was going to do something like that with Captain Lancet, where I wanted his costume to have big, bold areas, uh, like a lot of the Golden Age heroes. But I was going to maybe screen back some patterns like this by Frank Lloyd Wright uh, in the way that you see happening in this Phantom costume. Uh, what happened is I actually had two images like this. They weren't these ones exactly. It was a different window pattern, but uh, were similar to it. Uh, I had two mirrored sets of transparencies, and when they overlapped, they gave me something that was pretty much Captain Lancet's logo design. So I adapted as soon as I saw that, realized it was going to make a great costume, uh, you know, kind of saved my file, made sure I made a note to do that. And uh, while I didn't adapt that visual exactly, there was enough there for me to say, if I change this, this, and this, that becomes a really cool logo um, and kind of gives you the pattern you see that became Captain Lancet's costume. So Sort of a fun coincidence there that I guess I really do owe to the Phantom. So like I've said, um, if you're into these old comics, if you like the Phantom, the Shadow, Flash Gordon, Batman, the animated series, those are all things that really inspired the creation of my character here, Captain Lancet and his adventures, uh, which you can get for two more days on Zoop. Uh, we have the campaign that's going to end up in, in a very short amount of time, but you can get the entire story there in a collected hardcover format. You can get each of the individual issues. You get digital. We have some fun add-ons. So if you're into this stuff and you haven't checked out the book yet, I would ask you to go give it a look. And if it's something you're interested in, and check it out. Thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.